Hey, are you the guy from that interview? After I turned you down, you ended up becoming the driver. A while back, I had interviewed at a construction firm. The manager who conducted my interview smirked upon seeing me and said, I'd worry about your driving, man. You seem a bit slow. I stayed silent as he pressed on, having been quite harsh during the interview. But soon after realizing who I really was, he quickly turned pale and apologized. My name is James Anderson. At 45, I work in sales at a construction firm that's part of the housing franchise. This franchise involves selling standardized homes. Despite the limitations, I find fulfillment in building ideal homes by listening to clients' needs and proposing solutions within what is possible. Communicating with clients, sharing their worries and joys, is what I cherish in my work. I absolutely love my job. I live with my wife, daughter, and my father-in-law, who is the president of the franchise headquarters. My wife works there too, as an office assistant. This company holds study sessions several times a year for employees of franchise partners. It was during one of these that I met my wife when she was handling the reception and distributing documents. Only after we had been dating for a while did I learn her father was the president. This was a shock to me, and although I struggled with the thought of being good enough for the daughter of a president, I still wanted to marry her. I went straight to Robert and got his permission to marry, a story still fondly told among our family members. One day, I was called to the headquarters. Robert, who had kindly welcomed me years ago when I audaciously asked for his daughter's hand in marriage without an appointment, was now 63 years old. Facing me in his office, Robert started the conversation. As I've mentioned before, I plan to retire from being president when I turn 65, so I want you to take over as president in two years. Would you start training as my assistant from now? This had been discussed before. Robert didn't suggest this just because I was his son-in-law. He liked how I sincerely dealt with every client. Since the president of the construction firm I worked for had agreed to this, I nodded to Robert's words, thinking the day had finally come. Although I'm inexperienced, I will serve with all my heart, I said. I transitioned from running around on-site to learning the ropes of being a president at the headquarters. The job as a presidential assistant was new to me, involving a wide range of tasks. While I got more opportunities to appear in glamorous settings, unlike my sales days at the construction firm, I still felt something was missing. I missed the real voices from the field, like staying late to discuss how to fulfill fly's requests or seeing their joyful faces when looking at their new homes. However, as someone destined to become the next president, I focus on fulfilling my duties as an assistant. One day, I was approached by the head of the customer center for a consultation. It was reported that complaints had been increasing significantly lately for a certain construction firm affiliated with our franchise. The biggest complaint seemed to be that the completed homes were far from what was expected. The manager said that multiple warnings had been issued to the construction firm in the past. However, to no avail, the same kind of complaints kept coming in. A home is often the biggest purchase in a person's life. If people find out that their new home is far from what they envisioned, their disappointment is immense. Moreover, distrust toward the construction firm could eventually extend to the franchise headquarters. Believing that immediate action was necessary, I promptly informed Robert about the situation with the construction firm. May I go back to the field just once more? Even after warnings showed no effect, I wanted to see the situation for myself. All right, see what you can do your way, Robert said, glancing at me and chuckling wryly. I know how passionate you were about being on site. I do feel guilty for pulling you into the presidency. It's not forever, but for now, this issue is in your hands. Thank you so much. I expressed my heartfelt gratitude deeply and applied for a sales position at the construction firm in question, where an opening had just been advertised. Being sent from the headquarters could make them wary, so I decided to enter as a regular job seeker. On the day of the interview, the person who appeared as the interviewer was Dave, the manager of the construction firm. I knew some basic information about him from the documents at headquarters. It appears his father is the president of this construction firm, and he's expected to take over as president in a few years. After skimming through my resume, Dave looked up at me with an unimpressed expression. By the way, I'm pretending to be searching for a new job since the construction firm I worked for went bankrupt. I said, well, being unemployed at your age must be tough, he said, smirking sympathetically but then deliberately sighing heavily. Look, we're part of a franchise, which means there are a lot of restrictions and a whole lot to learn. You're 45, right? Don't you think that's kind of pushing it? 
it was clear from his tone that he preferred hiring younger people. I responded seriously, true, I am 45, but I bring experience that younger folks don't have. Yeah, that's nice, Dave cut me off, waving his hand dismissively and frowning as if annoyed. Look, you don't seem to get it, so let me explain. He looked at me as if I were a child who wouldn't listen. We're a franchise. To make a profit while paying royalties to headquarters, it's more important to secure a number of contracts than to indulge in some client fantasy. Do you get that so far? His attitude suggested he thought I was completely clueless. To secure these contracts, we need aggressive sales. Younger, energetic people are simply more practical for us than tired old men. Even someone as slow as you can understand that, right? Dave smirked and sighed again. Indeed, his argument had some points. How to balance the pros and cons of franchising greatly depends on the mindset of the construction firm and ultimately the business owners. Dave's stance was completely opposite to my client-first approach. I couldn't help but counter him. Of course, we're not volunteers here. I understand the need to make a profit. But for our clients, a home represents their dreams and hopes. It's crucial that we engage with each one of them. But once again, Dave interrupted me. What's an unemployed old guy like you talking about? You're pretty cheeky. He had been looking down on me with a smug grin, but the idea of being lectured by a middle-aged unemployed man seemed to really annoy him, and he glared at me fiercely. You talk about soft stuff like that, and that's why you're unemployed. You say your company went under, but weren't you actually fired? He glanced at me, noticing my silence, then eventually returned to grinning smugly. With a smirk back on his face, he pointed his index finger at me and said, Anyway, complaints like that are for headquarters to deal with, not us. You get it now, right? We don't need old guys here. With that, he made it clear he wanted me gone, abruptly ending the interview. I sighed involuntarily. Until this interview, I had hoped I could somehow help steer the construction firm in a better direction. But with a manager like that, complaints about the firm were unlikely to stop. The shortened, I called Robert, my father-in-law, and the president, to report the outcome. A few days later, back at my job as the presidential assistant, I was driving Robert from a meeting with a business partner as we were about to head back to headquarters. Robert said, there's a place I'd like to stop by first. Okay, I replied, although we had no other appointments outside, we had some time, so I followed his directions and drove to the specified location. It turned out to be the very construction firm we were discussing. Well, well, it's an honor to have the president of headquarters stop by. As soon as I parked the car, Dave, recognizing it as the company car from headquarters, rushed out and showed a fawning attitude to Robert. But when he noticed me getting out of the driver's seat, his eyes widened slightly before he sneered and addressed me. If it isn't the old man from that time, oh, you got turned down by us and became a driver, huh? This guy came to interview at our place a few days ago. Well, he didn't meet our hiring criteria, so I had to turn him down, Dave explained ingratiatingly, looking over at our Robert who was standing by. Then turning back to me with undisguised contempt, he continued, Hey, if your driving injures the president, I won't let it go, you know. I'm worried because you seem so slow. His loud laughter was the only sound in the awkward pause that followed. But cutting through the tension, Robert finally spoke up. Hey, you, is that how you speak to the next president? Dave tilted his head, confused by Robert's words. Next president. This man, this gentleman is. Yes, that's right. The man here, James, is my son-in-law. He's currently assisting me as a presidential aide, but he will eventually take over my position. Stunned, Dave muttered, and Robert affirmed with a stern look. I've known your father for a long time and have held him in high regard, but unfortunately, it seems you don't fit our company philosophy. We'll need to reconsider the franchise contract. Dave's face strained of color as Robert informed him of this. In a panic, he started to make excuses, his smile tinged with flattery. I apologize for the oversight. If I had known, I would have shown the proper hospitality. Oh, you're too, too slay, he stammered, sweating profusely and with a strange smile. Dave turned his awkward charm back on me. However, Robert dismissed his words. Oh, you didn't know about him. Is that what you're saying? That means you must not have attended any of the headquarters training sessions, am I right? Caught by Robert's pointed question, Dave's eyes began to dart around nervously. However, Robert persisted in his advances toward him. If you had attended even one recent training session, you would have known he is the next president. Oh, well, that is. Dave was rubbing his hands together as he glanced around. At that moment, 
A car pulled into the parking lot, and an elderly man stepped out with a surprise expression on his face. I recognized him. He was the president of this construction firm. What's going on here? It seemed he had just returned from being out, but when he stumbled upon the scene where Robert, the president of the headquarters with whom he had a personal relationship, his son-in-law and his own son were apparently having a dispute in the parking lot of his own construction firm, he wore a clear expression of bewilderment. Please, come inside, urged by the firm's president, we moved to the reception room where I explained the origin of the complaint and that his son had apparently been missing the training sessions. Upon hearing my explanation, the president turned his gaze sternly toward his son. What's this about? His voice strained with anger and disappointment. His son finally admitted his negligence. I've been busy with work and hadn't attended for about four months. Like a child caught in a prank, the son hung his head awkwardly as his father, the president, let out a huge sigh and then deeply apologized to us. I truly apologize for my son's disrespectful behavior. Additionally, it seems he hasn't been attending the mandatory training sessions for our franchise partners. What? Really? Upon hearing his father's words, Dave let out a frantic cry. Apparently, he was unaware that attendance was required. Realizing this, the president sternly reprimanded his wayward son. You thought you could slack off because you're going to be president one day? I never taught you to disregard our clients' needs and desires just to make a profit. While saying this with a flushed face, the president apologized again. Truly, this is all my fault for not supervising properly. I think a contract termination is unavoidable. Hearing this, Dave seemed to regret his actions belatedly, lost for words in dismay. The son shrank under his father's reprimand, and the father continued to apologize. Watching the two of them, Robert then slowly began to speak. Hey, please look up. There's no need to change the franchise contract. Dave looked up before his father at Robert's words, but Robert just glanced at him briefly and continued in a lecturing tone. Only if your son steps down from his managerial role and agrees to start over as a regular employee to relearn everything. Understood, both father and son's voices overlapped. Dave looked at his father as if in disbelief, but his father ignored his look. Thank you very much, he murmured his thanks gruffly. Then the president turned to me. I know it's a lot to ask, but I would really appreciate it if you, James, could help us by becoming our sales manager and turning our company around. Startled by the request, I blinked and then looked at Robert, who nodded as if to say he understood. Responding to that, I gave a nod to Robert and then faced the president again. Yes, I'd be honored to help. And so, I began working as the sales manager at the construction firm. Dave initially seemed unhappy, but perhaps influenced by my and the other's attitudes, he eventually started taking his work seriously. Thanks to this change, complaints cease, and I am now working daily on the ground, focusing on creating homes that meet our clients' needs, holding true to our mission. Although I will return to headquarters eventually, I am committed to making the most of the time I'm allowed, working hard every day.